On today's episode, I talk about the t- cancellation of Talking Smack and the future plans for 205 Live. I'll also talk about some rumored SummerSlam matches. And does WWE think Roman Reigns is still the guy? All this and more right here on the Sunday Night Heat. How's it going, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sunday Night Heat, the Dirt News and Rumor Show, right here on No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast. We are live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or we are available on the Spreaker app on all Android and Apple devices, and that's how you can chat with me in the chat while I'm on the air. When it is finished, this episode will be posted on Spreaker on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR. Also on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You can go follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram by searching up No Holds Barred WP. Be sure to head over to our YouTube channel and Spreaker and give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And let's get right to the news. That's right. That sound signifies, guys, that the news is here, and we have lots and lots of news this week. Uh, My God, this is probably going to be one of the longest Sunday Night Heats I'm ever going to do, maybe, and we'll see uh, how how much news we get in in the future with WWE, but I got so many topics this week. Um, Huge news with Talking Smack as uh, the recent news of it being canceled. I got some news about that. I got some news about 205 Live and its future. Uh, We're also going to talk about some rumored SummerSlam matches and some other stuff. And the big, big topic, which I'm saving for the end of the show, and that is, does WWE think Roman Reigns is still the guy? Yes, there's a lot of questions surrounding Roman Reigns at the moment. And if uh, he's going to be the future, you know, the John Cena of the WWE in the the coming future. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, Guys, I am Kyle Masters, your host. And this is No Holds Bad Wrestling Podcast. If you're new to the uh, to the channel and new to listening, you can go follow us on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. Um, you can join on the, on the conversation. We have a uh, weekly Raw and SmackDown reaction show, usually on Wednesdays or Thursday nights, and that is the Lowdown Show, so go check us out. You can go over to YouTube and give us a subscribe. There's a lot more content on there with unboxings, some 2K17 stuff, and we also post all our podcasts that we do on there. I usually have a co-host with me, but Corporate Cappy is taking a leave of absence for the summer. He is very busy and cannot be with me uh, during a lot of shows, so sometimes I'll have a special guest Sometimes I will have uh, just uh, myself, which this episode will just be by myself. Um, I, I tweeted about opening uh, the the Skype lines, and I, I will probably later in the middle of the show, just uh, right now. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of news out, then uh, take a small minute or two break so I can hook up Skype and then take in some Skype calls and we can talk about what news I've said and anything you guys have heard out there. So if you want to call in, then you want to call in using Skype, add us, no holes barred wrestling podcast all separate words and not all together and i'll add you to the contact list and then you'll be able to call in we'll just talk about the news and chit chat not long maybe like two or three minutes long i want to you know leave the open to everyone else that wants to talk but uh if you guys want to chat for a bit be sure to call in and i'll add you to skype so no holds barred wrestling podcast is the skype name so in saying that let's get right to what the show is and that is already news and rumors we'll start off with the hot topic That's already been going on this past weekend, and that's Talking Smack. Um, It's canceled. Talking Smack is canceled. Unbelievable. What the... It literally shocked me when I first... Like, I first heard about it. I'm like, nah, it can't be. It can't be canceled. They're not going to cancel one of their best shows. But sure enough, they cancel one of the greatest talk shows the Derby's ever had. I mean, they had potential with Bring It to the Table, but we all know what's going on with that. It's becoming more PGized... 
that makes any sense by every episode. It's just it's becoming more scripted and it's terrible. Um, I remember when Roseberg used to like speak his mind. Now he just sounds like a Sam Roberts robot, and he just you know he he he's reading exactly whatever he wants him to say, and it sucks. Um, but anyways, Talking Smack was definitely a great show. It was a, it was a place for the superstars to go and and speak their mind and and not be scripted, not sound so scripted. It was it was a great show, and I can't believe it's canceled. And the worst part of it was is that Renee Young and Daniel Bryan weren't even told by WWE. They were... Uh, well, Daniel Bryan came on Twitter to support Sami Zayn's uh, fundraiser, and he's got a good fundraiser going on. I forget, I didn't really read into it, so I, I apologize if I don't know too much about it. Um, so go check out Sami Zayn. I think he's got some uh, sort of fundraiser going on. So Daniel Bryan came on for to supporting that, and then he finds out that Talking Smack is canceled through Twitter. So he doesn't even find out through WWE. He finds out through Twitter. That's pretty sad. And Renee Young voiced her opinion on Twitter. And it sucks because they also canceled her network show. Uh, un, was it Unfiltered, I think it was called? Something. Like, Renee Young had her own show on the network. And that one was canceled too. So that sucks. Um, so poor girl, man. You know, she, she had a good thing going with Talking Smack. But Talking Smack is not officially canceled though. We got, we're got we getting it at the end of pay-per-view. So we're going to get it basically once a month. Um, which is all right. It's going to be w- interesting to see what they do at dual branded pay-per-views and, uh, which one do they, uh, they do. Um, but no, no news, uh, for dual branded pay-per-views have come out, uh, yet. So I'll read the news right now that I got about talking smack. WWE's talking smack airs weekly after every episode of SmackDown and 205 live. The show is hosted by Renee Young and usually features a variety of co-hosts, including Daniel Bryan, Shane McMahon, and JBL. The show gives WWE stars a different platform for them to showcase themselves to fans. The show has become one of the best things of the week for WWE fans. Oh, I went a little bit too far. Unfortunately, we have some bad news. According to a report by Mike Johnson of the PW Insider, Talking Smack is canceled as a weekly show. The show's final episode aired this past week. According to the report, instead of being a weekly show, it'll be moved to after pay-per-views events similar to what Raw does with Raw Talk. This will be a big disappointment to, sh- to some as the show has provided fans with a lot of entertaining moments. This includes uh, one of the best promos that we have seen in a while where The Miz went off on Daniel Bryan. If you guys have not seen that, go check it out on YouTube. It is the craziest uh, rant I've ever seen and definitely breaks the fourth wall a ton. And is definitely the best promo that Miz has cut in his career for sure, hands down. Um According to Justin Barrasso of SI.com, Talking Smack was canceled by Vince McMahon, but not due to the low viewership as originally reported. McMahon was apparently unhappy with Talking Smack and felt that the show did not serve the company's best interest. Barrasso also noted that McMahon has been making fewer physical appearances at television tapings as of late. So this guy who's not even at the tapings to oversee this, is being extremely critical on it and saying he's unhappy on how it serves the company's best interest. Are you f- are you fucking kidding me, Vince? This is probably one of the best shows that has come out on the network in a long time. Other than Table for Three and some of the Beyond the Rings, this is one of the greatest things that are happening right now because people. it might not show that people are watching it, but I guarantee you, if they're not watching it live on the network... They're going back on YouTube or whatever video platform that they can see and go watch Talking Smack. You just look at what Twitter has blown up after Talking Smack was canceled. It was insane. The, the hashtag Save Talking Smack, I believe it's still trending. Maybe not in the top, but it's still a trending hashtag. And people are pissed, man. Especially the co-hosts. Your hosts and co-hosts of the show are pissed. You know it's bad when they voice their opinion on Twitter and it, it, they disapprove it. It's insane, man. Um... I'm really pissed about it. So this, basically, Vince is saying, like, it's not what, it, it, he, he's basically saying he doesn't like when the superstars come out and are, are speaking their mind and are not scripted, basically. That's fucking, that's pathetic, man. Unbelievable. So the guy that's not even at most tapings is making one of the hugest moves in a while and canceling a great show, something that's good. I can't believe that, man. I when I when I first heard that, I'm like, there's no way. Like, this must be a fake report. This is probably just a fake Vince report. But no, this is a credible source, and it's it's probably most likely legit. Unbelievable, man. Like, Talking Smack is one of your best. Shows. You got one of the best promos of their career out of the Miz through the show, and it's it's a show where you can do more with other superstars who haven't broken out of that shell yet. I just, oh my god, I, I honestly don't understand why they canceled it. It was a horrible idea. 
They honestly need to rethink their decision and bring it back as a weekly show. We'll see what happens on SmackDown this week. There'll probably be a shit ton of signs that say save Talking Smack or some stuff like that or bring back Talking Smack. Uh, I'd be be shocked if there was a Talking Smack chant. So we'll see. Um, Mason Dunbar, I chance, says Vince hates everything fans like. Pretty much. He says he's all about the fans. He says his number one thing is listening to the Darby Universe and it's all about them. Clearly it's not because you just canceled a show that we all actually like. So... And he's just claiming it's not due to viewership numbers. Guarantee he just sees how many people actually tune in live. But you put it in the worst time slot. You're putting it after 205 Live, which is after SmackDown. So after a three-hour show, for sure people don't want to tune in. People loved it when it was after SmackDown. You should have just keep it after SmackDown and you moved... The decision is you should be moving 205 Live over to Wednesday and putting it on Wednesday after NXT. NXT is only an hour. Make 205 Live only an hour. There you go. There's two hours on Wednesday night. Two different shows. Put it at full sale. Get I, we said this time and time again on this podcast. And it sounds like a broken record eventually. Just it, it's bogus. Vince doesn't know what he's doing. Guys need to show up for half the TV tapings. Unbelievable, man. Uh, someone just needs to slap Vince in the face and tell him to get a clue, man. This is this is getting really bad. Um. So yeah, I, I hope talking smack eventually just comes back. Maybe we'll see. Um. If not, I'll be excited to tune in on SmackDown pay per views and. We'll see what happens on the dual branded ones because they really haven't come out and said anything in uh, anything in detail about that. Um, next bit of news: rumors on the Raw Women's Title match at SummerSlam. Sasha Banks defeated Alexa Bliss via countout at Great Balls of Fire. As a result, Alexa retained the Raw Women's Championship. It was looking clear that Sasha would be getting another shot at the title in a singles match or maybe even at SummerSlam. Uh, not so fast, though. On Raw last night, Bailey pinned Alexa Bliss in a tag team match. Well, not last night. Uh, so last this past week. Uh, Sasha and Bailey against Alexa and Nia Jax in that match. Plus, Nia Jax has been saying for the past few weeks she deserves a shot at, Bliss's, at Bliss and her belt. Um, hold up. Nia Jax, when did you deserve a shot at the belt? Where were you for the past three or four weeks before this? Where was any, any diva? Clearly, Dana Brooke and Emma are not hurt, but they decide to be off TV. So, what, one of them going to come in here now and say they deserve a title shot? Night Jax, you're, you're on the same fence here. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that she deserves a title shot. She needs to prove herself a little bit more. I know she's a beast, but to me, it, it's not right. It should be just Alexa and Sasha Banks, in my opinion, again. Uh, maybe have the stipulation of no count out. Or if you add Bailey in there, it could be a cool triple threat, but... I don't agree with what's going to go on here, and I'm going to read the rest of it here. Uh, on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer and co-host Brian Alvarez were discussing the woman of SmackDown Live being put into another multi-person match at Battleground. Um, in case you missed it, Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch versus Lana versus Natalia versus Nat- Tamina was announced with the winner earning a title shot against Naomi at SummerSlam for Battleground. During this discussion, Meltzer said that a multi-person match, Fatal 4-Way, is also planned for the women's Raw Women's title at SummerSlam. So, it looks like WWE is going in the direction of the Raw Women's title being defended in a Fatal 4-Way. Great. Like we need another multi-person match at, at, at SummerSlam. It's already shaping up to be every single match being multi-person besides the WWE Championship. Like, we got the rumor of Joe... Braun, Brock, and Roman, which is okay because that's actually a four-man match that people want to see. But then now you're going to add the SmackDown number one contenders match at, I know it's at Battleground, but uh, there's actually more rumors and I don't have it written down here. I'm surprised I don't. Um, The SmackDown women's title is supposed to be a multi-woman match at (laughs) SummerSlam. So you got that. So you get the two women's titles, the universal title, and now only the WWE Championship is going to be in a singles match as far as we know. So we'll see, and maybe the, I'm guessing the tag team matches will probably be a multi-tag team title match. So, oh my God, man, just bring back Fatal Four Way already and make it SummerSlam. You might as well, because every other match is a Fatal Four Way match. Um, Wrestling article says if it ends up happening, we can assume that based on Raw this week, everybody will be going with Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Nia Jax. Uh, I don't agree with that at all. I I honestly think it should still be uh, a singles or a triple threat. Triple Threat is the the highest I'll go. Fatal 4-Way is just out of ridiculous, man. We've already seen that crap before. Um, I honestly would love to see Sasha have the title after Great Balls of Fire and feud with Bayley one-on-one at SummerSlam, reliving their Brooklyn feud from NXT, and then Sasha Banks finally going heel. I think that's what they should have done, but 
you know, I guess there would be loves or multi-man matches, whatever. It is what it is. Um, we'll see what happens in the next coming weeks. Maybe it changes. You know, everything does change on a weekly basis, it looks like, in Dota B. So, hopefully, they change their minds. Um, next bit of news. Update on Shelton Benjamin in the WWE. There have been so many rumors for the past several months about Shelton Benjamin possibly returning to the WWE. Benjamin was supposed to join the SmackDown Live roster in 2016 with something that's even airing uh, to advertise his debut. And I remember one of those because I was actually at the Buffalo uh, SmackDown uh, Live debut after the draft. And they that's where they first aired the one. And we are so pumped for that. Um... A shoulder injury halted his return. As a result, Benjamin never ended up signing a contract with WWE. Fast forward to the last few months, and there were still rumors that he could be in WWE bound soon. Benjamin has fully recovered from his shoulder injury that required surgery. And he, uh, he had a... Uh, I'm pretty sure he had a, uh, a separated shoulder um, that required surgery. I think that was it. I think it was separated shoulder. Anyways, Ryan Sadden of the Pro Wrestling Sheet has refuted refuted earlier reports that Benjamin hadn't signed with WWE. He says that his sources say that the deal is now done. So it looks like Benjamin will be in WWE bound or will be WWE bound very soon. Great news for fans of Shelton. Looks like we should see him in the next few weeks or months. Maybe a surprise for AJ Styles US Open Challenge. Could you imagine the pop he would get answering AJ Styles for an Open Challenge to the US title? I would love to see that. I think it's a perfect spot to get him back into the roster and into that mid-card level where he should be and deserves to be when he comes back. Um, a feud with AJ Styles would be sick, Shelton Benjamin. I think he can still go. I think he's still got it. So... Uh, we'll see what happens. I think maybe he'll be able to answer a challenge. That'd be cool. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but Sheldon Benjamin looks like his uh, deal is pretty much finalized with Darby. So finally, we're getting the gold standard back to the Darby. I don't know if he's going to be a heel or a face. Baby face less likely to be a gold standard heel, most likely. Um, if you guys don't know and want to go back and look at Sheldon Benjamin's gold standard act, it was basically when he was uh, a heel. And it was uh, one of the best uh, heel works I've seen in a while at the time, uh, especially for Sheldon Benjamin. Um, if not, then I'm okay with him being a baby face, but it'll be tough being a baby face going up against AJ Styles. So maybe he gets the gold standard uh, to come back and is a heel in that mid card level. So we'll see. And uh, good luck to Sheldon Benjamin, man. Um, and maybe he can be, uh, maybe he could be that influence guy for, uh, Chad Gable and Jason Jordan. You know, they're, they're, they're kind of looking like they're the second coming of Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas, uh, team angle. So I don't know, maybe they're going to do something there. Um, can you imagine if Sheldon Benjamin brought back Charlie Haas and then they faced, uh, American Alpha? I think that'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty, pretty cool. Like nostalgia kind of match. I would love to see that. Hopefully they do that for like a SmackDown episode or, like a pay-per-view. That'd be kind of cool. I'd love to see that. And we got American Elf on TV. Why not? Um, next bit of news. The heat with Enzo Amore backstage in the WWE. Yes, Enzo Amore has some heat. Lots of heat. So, well, crazy crap has been happening this past week. And uh, this, is, this is not looking good for Enzo and especially Big Cass. Uh, Enzo Amore recently split from his longtime tag team partner and friend Big Cass in WWE Television. It looks like he has more things to worry about in WWE than the tag team breakup. After a recent report has dropped about him having some backstage heat in the WWE. Dave Meltzer in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter says there is some big time heat with Enzo Amore amongst the people in the WWE locker room. There was apparently an incident on a tour bus several weeks ago while WWE was traveling together. Uh, details of what exactly happened are not clear, but Enzo was reportedly kicked off the bus by none other than Roman Reigns. Yes, Roman Reigns, the guy. <laughs> this is not only his yard. This is his bus. Kicked off Enzo Amore. So apparently, we don't know how we don't know much about the situation except that the incident was reportedly upset a number of people. So, I don't know. Maybe Enzo was, got out of line. Maybe he was drinking a little too much. And he said something that was way out of line. And uh, he wasn't going to get off the bus. And then Roman was the guy eventually to step in and kick him off the bus. But uh, it's funny to hear that it was Roman the, the one. Especially, of course, it's got to be Roman, right? That kicked off Enzo Amore off the bus. Um, according to Meltzer, Elsa, uh, Enzo also wasn't allowed to dress in the locker room for a brief time after the incident. This is referred to... Uh, in the report as the Miz treatment. 
And if you guys don't know, uh, there's an old story of Chris Benoit kicking the Miz out of the locker room when he was new in the WWE. And whatever he did on the tour bus uh, seems to have pissed off a number of people. Uh, Enzo Amore, so uh, it's it's kind of uh, the same situation where I guess uh, I think I remember that Miz said something that was out of line. Chris Benoit got pissed about it and kicked him out of the locker room, and he wasn't able to change in the locker room for a couple of weeks. Um, Enzo was up uh, also apparently unhappy with the split of him and Big Cash because his future isn't secure as a single star, and this could be one of the reasons why there was an outburst on the bus. So maybe someone was arguing with him saying, you know, maybe you, you know, you're nothing without big cast and Enzo took to that and, you know, got pissed off. You know, it's natural for him to get pissed off about that. And I heard also apparently that the tears that he was, that were, that were coming out of his eyes during the whole split up were actually real because he really didn't want this tag team to get split up. Neither did I. I really didn't want this tag team split up. There's no point. Big Cass is not going to get over as a, a singles guy, as much as people want to say. They're going to put him up against big guys like like Big Show, and Mark Henry will come back for a one-off. He's not going to be able to do anything. I doubt they put him in a, in a feud with Brock Lesnar. I really highly doubt that. And as for Enzo Moore, what the hell are you going to do with him? I know the perfect place for him, but they won't ever do it. The 205 Live, but that's again, that's almost like burying Enzo Moore because, no, because they have 205 Live in a crappy time slot. And it's sad to say, no one gives a crap about 205 Live. I know it's, it's, it's great wrestling, but... It's a shame, man. People half the people leave the arena sometimes. So putting him there is not going to do any good for his career. That's why I didn't agree with the split of Enzo and Cass. I really didn't see the, the benefit of doing that because now you're just taking away a lot of tag teams off of Raw. You already split up Golden Truth. Now you're split up Enzo and Cass. And if the rumors are true with the Broken Hardies, they would not be broken together. Jeff might split away. So there's another tag team split. So what do you have left? You have uh, the Revival left, the Club left, and Cesaro and Sheamus. That's it. Is that all you have on Raw left? You don't want to split everyone else up, man. You, you got to keep the tag team division alive. You got to keep them together. I hope they just settle their differences and, 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 they, and they, they get back together soon because this is really a ridiculous move. If not, then whatever. It is what it is, but I feel bad. And uh, as for Enzo Mori in the bus incident, you know, maybe you got to smart up a little bit. But as for uh, him getting kicked off the buff by Roman, uh, you know, it's not my place to say that he shouldn't have been kicked off the bus, but who knows? I, I don't know what happened on the bus. I don't know what was said. So... It is what it is, but it's just it's it's hilarious that it's Roman Reigns out of all people. Um, let's move on some more news. Uh, where has the WWE Pyro gone? Yes, big question where everyone has noticed that the Pyro is 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 gone in WWE. And a lot of people noticed it uh, with Brock Lesnar. So you might have noticed that there is a lack of Pyro in WWE television over the past few weeks. This is most notable during the Brock Lesnar entrance this pa or this past weekend at Great Balls of Fire. Many fans were wondering what was going on because this usually is a staple of his entrance. So why are we seeing less and less pyro on WWE television these days? I have the news for you. According to Dave Meltzer on the Sunday edition of the Wrestling Observer Radio, the reason is simply financial. Meltzer says WWE is using less and less pyro as a way to cut their weekly costs. The company also doesn't feel like it is necessary to do it all the time. It remains unclear if WWE will use Pyro for some of their bigger events like SummerSlam and WrestleMania. If we had to guess, we would assume that they will still keep it for their bigger shows. Um, now, my thing with the, the, the Pyro is that I think for certain superstars, you need to have their Pyro. It kind of goes hand in hand with them, like the, the article says. Um, Brock Lesnar needs the, the Pyro because that's just him. It's the way he comes out and the way he presents himself. And it, it's in his entrance. He just looks stupid. When he does the whole thing on the stage where it, the Pyro is supposed to go off, he just looks dumb as hell when there's no Pyro. It literally does nothing for me, and he just looks like a goofball. So I think certain superstars need the Pyro. For their entrance, it's not going to cost a lot if you have it for certain superstars. I mean, what? Who has Pyro? On the, let's just look at the Raw roster. Brock Lesnar has Pyro. Uh, the Hardys have Pyro. Um, I can't really think of anyone else that should have Pyro. And no one else really deserved that Pyro. The, uh, other than that, that's it. Like, why, why do you have to cut the cost for that? They had a stupid Pyro the Nakamura's entrance, and thank God they took that out because that was ridiculous. That was not needed. The whole Ryback Pyro where you just never didn't see it. You heard it, but you didn't see it. Um, 
So I don't know. I, I'm on the bridge with the pyro. I know I kind of agree. Like it's not needed. It kind of takes away out of wrestling, and it's basically like WWE's way of like seeing other companies out there. As much as they don't want to admit that they look at other wrestling companies, it's it's them looking at other wrestling companies and see what works for them. And they see all like the the other wrestling companies, the top ones that are not using pyro, and they're like, okay, maybe we don't need to use pyro to compete with them, or not really to compete with them, but you know, just be as good as them, um, if not better. So. I think they'll still keep it for their big events. SummerSlam, we'll see some pyro for sure. WrestleMania, there's always pyro. There's always fireworks outside the stadium. We're definitely going to see that. Um, as for regular pay-per-views, maybe. I think maybe they should just do it for regular pay-per-views then. Don't have it for Raw and SmackDown. That's, that's saving money still. And you only have pyro for a certain amount of superstars. So I don't see what the reason is with this whole financial cut thing. They're making millions of dollars. I think they're making as much money as they ever have right now. So... The reason for the financial cut is beyond me. Maybe they have plans of signing some big stars in the future, which makes sense. And they want to they want to sign Kenny Omega. They might want to get Cody Rose back. They probably want to get the Young Bucks in WWE eventually. That's a lot of money to give them right there. So I don't know. Um, we'll see uh, if there's any more news in the upcoming weeks about the recent pyro cuts, and we'll see if they've completely taken it out in general. Um, next bit of news. <laughs> And this is news that I don't uh, read and don't really click in and say on, on the show unless I, I know it's coming from a credible source or I know it's coming from multiple sources. If it's just coming from one source, I don't believe it. And it's just it's one of those news things where it comes up all the time. Now Nowadays, every other month, it kind of seems like it comes out. But uh, I'll talk about it anyways. WWE wants CM Punk back in the company. Yes, apparently they do. Dirty apparently wants CM Punk to return to the company, according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. While speaking about Mauro Ronaldo's return to the company, he wrote about how some people will leave the company on horrible terms, but must, but most end up returning. Meltzer wrote, That's why no matter what is said, Dirty wants CM Punk back, and even though Punk was adamant about never doing it, history tells you time heals all a lot of wounds. Despite Dirty wanting CM Punk to return to the company, he, wa- he apparently has no intentions on it, according to his wife, AJ Lee. During her recent book tour, AJ Lee said that she misses wrestling, but her husband does not. It's also worth noting that Punk is still going through a legal battle with WWE's Dr. Chris Ammon. And so it looks like a return anytime in the near future will not be happening. So settle your horses if you see a lot of CM Punk coming back to the company or WWE wants CM Punk rumors in the next couple of months. I doubt it will ever happen soon. Maybe in two or three years from now. I mean, he was one of my favorite wrestlers at the time when he was here. It sucks. I'd love to see him back in WWE, but i am come to terms with that he's not going to come back anytime soon. I'm going to give it a two to three year stamp, maybe even four as uh, far as that goes. But he's happy doing what he's doing right now. So, you know, basically it's one of those things where just leave him alone. Leave him alone. He doesn't want to come back. Doesn't want to come back. We have enough roster. We have enough superstars on the roster and enough talent on the roster that we don't need CM Punk to come back anytime soon. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, some more news. The main event of SummerSlam rumor. Coming out of Monday's Raw, there's speculation that the main event for next month's SummerSlam will see Brock Lesnar defending the Universal Championship against Roman Reigns, Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman in a fatal four-way. Dave Meltzer discussed the possibility of the match being a three-way for the championship on Monday's installment of the Wrestling Observer Radio. However, those plans may change. The belief is that Braun will make an appearance on next week's Raw during the number one contenders match. Duh. I I don't think anyone else didn't see that coming. Uh, Between Joe and Roman, this will play into storyline to set up the fatal four-way match at SummerSlam. One of the reasons Derby would want to set up a multi-man match is because it will allow them to have an out for either Lesnar or Roman. Basically, Lesnar wouldn't have to pin Roman, and Roman wouldn't have to pin Lesnar with other competitors in a match. Now, I don't think WWE is going to be completely sold on on Lesnar and and Reigns at next year's WrestleMania, and I'll get into that in the end of the show with the big news out of Roman Reigns. So, I don't know. It's a good way to do it. I I mean, a multi-man match... They've already proved that a multi-man match is going to be brutal. Um, These guys obviously can cut promos on each other. We've seen that this past Monday night on Raw. Um, I'm all for a multi-man match in this case. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. And I, I love the way they're they're out for either Lesnar and Roman in this case. So I don't know. I, I can even pick, pick a clear-cut winner. I mean, Samoa Joe would look great with the Universal title after this. Uh, Lesnar retaining would be all right. 
Braun Strowman definitely deserves the Universal title. I really don't like if Roman would come out as champion here. I really wouldn't see the point of it. Um, if he did, I would have him drop it at the next pay-per-view uh, sometime soon because I don't think he literally deserves or should get the Universal title or is going to with the, the last bit of news I have at the end of the show. So stay tuned for that. We'll talk more about Roman when we get to that point. Um, some more news, some more rumored matches for SummerSlam. So following this year's Men's Money in the Bank ladder match, there has been speculation that AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura might take place at WWE SummerSlam this year. However, according to Dave Meltzer, Styles versus Nakamura is not the direction in which WWE is going for SummerSlam. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm reading this. It is more likely that AJ Styles will face John Cena for the United States Championship at the pay-per-view. Are you fucking serious? We're going to get this again. I know these guys put on a good match, and they can boost SummerSlam up, but come on, we've seen it at last year's SummerSlam. We've already seen this match. We don't want to see it again. Give us something new. You have enough people on the roster to give us something new for this U.S. title. They want to make the U.S. title the number one title on SmackDown. Putting John Cena and AJ Styles together, sure, that would help a bit. But I don't want to see the same goddamn match. I'm pretty sure all you out there don't want to see the match again. I'd rather see Styles and Nakamura at WrestleMania, but I would love to see John Cena versus, uh, let's say, what was it Jinder Mahal for the WWE title at SummerSlam. And AJ Styles, I don't know, face someone else like uh, Baron Corbin or uh, Styles faces like a Ty Dillinger for the US title who longly deserves a shot in a mid card. Someone else rather than John Cena, I would love, but it looks like that's the direction they're going in. Um, I'd be extremely pissed if they actually finalized that. I hope it changes in the next couple of weeks as the WWE changes lots of shit coming up. Um, I know a lot of you out there would be okay with Styles and Cena again, but I, you just got to think of it like this. They've done, they've had like five matches in their last few together. Do we actually want to see this again? We had it at last year's SummerSlam. Why do we need a repeat for the US title? Why do we need to have a repeat with these guys? Yeah, they could put on a four-star match, but I don't want to see it. I want to see Styles face someone else. A Styles Dillinger match would be cool to see. A Styles, I don't know, uh, Kevin Owens rematch, cool, whatever. I mean, it'd be the third time because they're already going to have the rematch at Battleground. Or you do a multi-man match or finally Sami Zayn to get a shot at a title for once. Why not Sami Zayn and AJ Styles? That would be just as good of a match as Cena and AJ Styles. I love to see Styles and Zayn go at it for the US title. That'd be great. But nope, looks like WWE is going in the direction of John Cena. So we'll see what happens. Uh, some more news about SummerSlam Brewer matches. Uh, once WWE star Finn Balor was moved away from the Universal title picture... And began a feud with newcomer Elias Samson. Speculation became or began as to where Finn Balor would fit on this year's SummerSlam card. If he would be not challenging for the Universal title. So we don't even know about Finn Balor. But we clearly see that it's going to be a fatal four-way uh, with those monsters for the Universal title. Um, according to Billy Batty of Sports Kita. Finn Balor is currently scheduled to face Bray Wyatt at this year's pay-per-view. Now, that's a match I'd love to see because Demon versus Bray Wyatt is going to be great. Um, the report adds Balor versus Wyatt was originally slated to begin in June. However, WWE held off the program when both Balor and Wyatt were needed for the five-man Extreme Rules number one contenders match. However, the pair is now finally set to battle at Brooklyn... As a part of this year's SummerSlam, the build towards the feud will likely begin on Raw this coming Monday night. So this soon, we're going to finally get the build for these guys. And it appears Wyatt is done with Rawls and Balor is done with Samson. Awesome. Can you imagine Seth, uh, Elias Samson and Seth Rollins go at it? That'd be a cool match. I'd love to see Rollins and Samson. Uh, hopefully they have like a little Raw kind of feud. Um, but yeah, Wyatt and Balor set to start this Monday. Love to see that. Uh, Greg in the chat with Styles vs. Harper. I'd love to see Styles vs. Harper too, Greg. That's actually a good match. But into the, uh, Balor and White here. Finally, we're going to get the start of this feud. I've been wanting to see this feud for all year now since Raw, since Bray Wyatt got shaken up and got put on Raw and the same brand as Finn Balor. Um, we're finally going to get to see Demon Balor back, hopefully at SummerSlam. And him versus Bray Wyatt, I hope, is a good match. But it sucks for Bray Wyatt because in this case, it almost looks like Finn Balor would win unless they make Bray Wyatt win because they, they, they just had Bray Wyatt beat Rollins twice. So who knows? I think that's a good way to do it. I think you had to have Wyatt beat Rollins twice in order to 
look good going up against the Demon Balor. So I cannot wait for this feud to start. I hope it's true, and it does start this Monday. And I cannot wait for the match at SummerSlam with uh, Wyatt and Finn Balor. A lot of people want to see that match, man. It's just one of those things. I know a lot of people criticize Bray Wyatt and how he calls himself a god. And because of his record, he doesn't really seem like a god. But um, I am still have hope for the Bray Wyatt character, and I still hope. They uh, do some big things with him in the coming future. So him with Finn Balor is a great idea and will surely boost the SummerSlam card this year. Um, I got some more news and it has to do with Austin Aries. So not this Friday, but the Friday before it was announced by WWE that Austin Aries has been released from his WWE contract. The most recent Wrestling Observer newsletter confirms that many of the writers and fellow cruiserweights were not unhappy to see him go based on his attitude. Um, Aries had a 90-day non-compete agreement attached to his WWE contract, which ends on October 5th, 2017. According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Aries will continue to collect his downside guaranteed from WWE until that point and will be able to use the Austin Aries name after the agreement expires. Aries can work independent dates during the next three months, but the dates will have to be approved by WWE. This means he won't be working anywhere. WWE doesn't want him working until after his non-compete expires. The Wrestling Observer also notes that the terms of Aries' release are consistent with WWE's uh, decide, decided release. He Had he quit on his own, the company could have at least attempted to enforce the remainder of his contract. It sucks to see Austin Aries leave, man. He was a big help for that 205 Live division. And now with him gone, man, you need another boost. And that's why I think uh, Enzo Amore needs to be that guy to go over to 205 Live because you need a, a boost right now. Who the hell is going to beat Neville for that goddamn Cruiserweight title, man? There's no clear-cut number one guy who's believable. I'd love to say Cedric Alexander, but I don't think he's there yet, especially from coming back from injury. It doesn't look like they're pushing him in the right way towards that. Um, but it sucks, man. Austin Aries is such an incredible piece of talent. I hate to see him go, but I hope he does good and has a uh, good future uh, with the indies, uh, the indie dates, and whatever he does in, in the future with his career after October 5th. We'll see what happens. Um, that could have been a match we could have seen. Styles versus Austin Aries. We could have moved Austin Aries from the roster and put him on SmackDown for whatever reason and had him face Styles to so have Styles and Austin Aries go at it for the U.S. title. That would be a cool match. But anyways, um, yeah, it sucks to see Aries leave. Um, now that... 205 Live is becoming more diminished by the second. You need another guy to replace him. So you, I, I think Enzo Mori would be a perfect fit. Or maybe even if you do go after him, I don't know what the whole contract situation and his uh, terms with RWR are, but Rey Mysterio would be a, a, a perfect add right now at a, at a falling division. So unless they have plans to start pushing uh, some talent finally, I don't think we're going to see anyone beat Neville anytime soon. And it sucks, because that guy's been holding the title for a long time, and he's just, it's making it boring. It's getting stale. So hopefully we get someone that breaks out or they move Enzo Mori over to 205 Live. I think that'd be a perfect fit for him. Um, some more news. Yes, more and more and more news, guys. Update on the broken... You know what? Actually, you know what? I think we're going to hold it there. Yeah, we're going to take a two-minute break. And I'm going to open up the Skype calls. If you guys want to call and talk about the news so far, we'll open it up and then we'll get into the last bit of news. So I'm going to take a two-minute break here, guys, and I'll be right back uh, after this quick two-minute break. <laughs>
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back from the two minute break. I had to go set up Skype. Um, if you guys want to call in and talk about my circle party, you guys can. Then you guys can call in. I had the song playing there. I apologize. Um, so, yeah, guys, you want to call on Skype? Call in, add me, No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, and we'll talk about any news that I've said or if you guys have some news that I haven't said yet, and we'll just talk. So I'm going to open the Skype lines now. There we go. So I've opened them up. So guys, call in if you would like, and we'll just chat. And I'll just talk. As I'm as we're waiting for the Skype calls, I'll just open up uh, the news here, and I'll talk about what else is new. Um Two debuts from Ring of Honor actually just happened. Uh, if you guys didn't see it on Twitter, Bobby Fish debuted in NXT this past week. And also we had Kyle O'Reilly, finally. Kyle O'Reilly signing. That was a a long-awaited signing. I've been waiting for him to sign and uh, get into NXT. Uh, maybe he was at the Development Center because I actually didn't hear anything about him from the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, Bobby Fish. Finally there. So it looks like they're stacking up on uh, some the NXT roster, which is good because they're going to need to once Bobby Roode leaves and once Asuka leaves, you're going to need some top people in there. Um, and it's good with the Mae Young Classic. If Asuka leaves, you know, you, you got another chance to build that division, maybe find a top star and the replacement for Asuka. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. So good for both of them. I hope Bobby, or Bobby, <laughs> Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly uh, do good uh, with their uh, upcoming... Uh, NXT careers, and also there will be signed Leo Rush to a contract with WWE, and is said to be a done deal. Uh, he is expected to join NXT roster shortly. Um, that's interesting, Leo Rush, man. Uh, cool. Uh, oh, whoa. So my Skype just crashed. That's interesting. And it's saying it needs to update itself. All right. So while Skype updates itself, and we wait, I'll just get into more news. Uh, WWE is currently attempting to have Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor appear on Raw. Oh my god. What a shit show this has been between Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather. I know a lot of people are, are for it and people have mixed opinions about this. I'm just saying, like, it, it is literally a gong show every single press conference I've watched so far. Man, is this going to be an anticipated fight, man. I don't know if I'm going to watch it or not. We'll see. Um, I'll probably catch the replay of it if I can and I'm working, but... Unbelievable, man! It, it, it's crazy. And if WWE could get these guys on on like a episode of Raw, could you imagine the mute button that would have to be pressed a million times <laughs> during this press con or in this WWE press conference? Conor McGregor ain't gonna give a fuck. Conor McGregor will not listen to WWE if they tell him to mute himself or watch his swearing. He don't care. He'll go off. He'll go off and and will have to bleep him every other word. Floyd Mayweather has worked with WWE in the past. He'd be professional about it. But as much as Conor McGregor is somewhat of a professional, I guess. He wouldn't be in this case. The guy's a nut bar. Um, so we'll see what, we'll see what happens if, if they end up having to go through a Raw episode in their uh, Conor McGregor Mayweather tour. Or May... I don't know what they call it. McGregor May tour. I don't know. There's some, there's some sort of stupid hashtag for this. But whatever. It's stupid. That's what it is. Um, it looks like Skype is still updating. I apologize for that, guys. Oh, my God. I don't know why it's updating. I never had that before. Um, next bit of news. We'll just get right into it. The update on the Broken Brilliance. Yes. Wonderful. The Broken Brilliance update. Um, last Monday on Raw, Matt and Jeff Hardy were cutting a promo to discuss their Raw Tag Team Championships from their Ironman match at Great Balls of Fire in the direction of the team going forward. During the promo, Jeff stated the sum... That some assumed that they would fade away and classify themselves as obsolete. Oh my god. When he said that, I was losing my mind. I had goosebumps, man. I'm like, oh my god, they're actually going to become broken. Finally. Um, the rest of the news states, uh, as seen on various occasions, anything related to the Broken Hardy's gimmick uh, due to IP tied up with Anthem and GFW is still is at a standstill. Uh, Wrestle Zone reports that Jeff Jarrett confirmed, or, or sorry, Jeff Jarrett's conference call in which he stated the ownership always lies with the publisher, and that's not new to this industry or intellectual property law. However, the reason why Jeff was able to use that line, according to PW Insider, is because he wrote the song, and as a result, he could use it to simply 
as simply reciting lyrics. So oh, there's a little, there's a little uh, snake, snake right there, a little sneaky move right there for Jeff Hardy and. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and Matt, oh, so we got more news that Matt and Rebby Hardy give an update on the broken dispute. Also, during the conference call with Jeff Jarrett, he stated that hats off to those guys in the performance, but it goes to the ownership and there's multiple writers. There's writers who were at the part of the broken brilliance, then that is very obvious that they are no longer with the company, Matt Conway and Billy Corgan, to be exact. But you have Jeremy Borash, Jimmy Long, and Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. So there is a group of writers without question. According to Matt and Rebby Hardy, an agreement was reached last week, which also included a clause that Rebby would be fined $5,000 every time she said something disparaging about TNA. Holy crap. <laughs> Matt emphasized that Rebby has not said anything for weeks, but Anthem continues to stall on their end of the deal. Of course they're stalling. They don't want to make, they don't want there to make any goddamn money on this crap. It's sad, man. Just give it up, Anthem, and just like try to work on your own thing and making new stuff. Maybe you guys create an idea that's even bigger than the Broken Hardys. You never know. Just just let this go, basically. Um, Matt Hardy quotes, True, at N. Norholm and Leonard Asper could end this issue we've been willing to. Rebby's pe peaceful for weeks while they stand blatantly stall. Hmm. Yeah, so Anthem's not budging. They should. I, I hope. I hope there is a budge because it, it, it's weird that there's a coincidence that Matt and Jeff did their whole little broken spiel this week on Raw, and at the same time on uh, after Raw we had Dixie Cutter appear on the Kurt Angle 24. So I don't know. It, it's weird how that kind of coincidentally happened on the same night. I don't know if it was a coincidence or not, but I think the deal's reached. I think they actually reached a deal, and now they're just kind of like. Not coming fully out with it or else the fans on the internet would go nuts and just rage over when they're finally going to come out. I think they're just going to slowly slip it out and then we're finally going to get it at SummerSlam. Maybe the night before, maybe the night after. But I think by SummerSlam we're going to get the fully broken gimmick. Whether it's just Matt or both Matt and Jeff, it's going to be awesome. I cannot wait for it. And we got a huge tease with it from Matt and Jeff this week on Raw and it was great to see. Hopefully we get more teases uh, as the weeks come by on Monday Night Raw. Um... Some more news. They're going to be planning on signing lots of Mae Young Classic participants. Yes. The Mae Young Classic is going to be a pretty big deal if Derby has anything to do with it. The 32-woman tournament will showcase the abilities of some of the world's premier female talent. But it turns out Derby might want more from some of these ladies than a simple tournament appearance. And holy crap, I've seen some uh, GIFs and some clips from this tournament so far, and I cannot wait to watch the full tournament come August, man. Um, some, more, uh, some more out of this article. Although some women in the Mae Young Classic already have a WWE contract, many of them are working on open deals that only include this tournament. However, with the response WWE is receiving from these ladies, it's hard to imagine WWE would want to let some of them go at this point. Brian Alvarez up noted in the, on the Wrestling Observer Live that the word he's heard from sources in WWE which implied they're looking to sign a lot of these women to actual contracts. Whether they're just signed them to NXT contracts or four-fledged WWE deals, it is unknown at this time, but it could very well be a mixture of the two. It was reported that WWE doesn't want to sign all 32 women, but Alvarez hinted at the fact that WWE would be signing up to 10 of them. The attitude backstage was very impressive, and apparently some of the ladies came in looking for brass rings to grab, and many of them did just that, apparently out of round one taped so far. Unbelievable, man. That's going to boost that women's division huge, especially the NXT one as soon as Oscar gets called up, and maybe they add some to the already declining both Raw and SmackDown Live women's division. So that'll be cool to see. Um, I'm going for my, my girl... Uh, Oh, God, I always forget how to say her name. It's like Taikara, Taikara Cody. I think I'm saying that right. Um, she's uh, one. Of, she's the girl basically that looks like Natty and Renee Young had a, a child together. <laughs> um, I, I picked her. I, I don't know. I, I've seen some of her Brazilian uh, video, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu videos, and she's a beast. So, I don't know. I picked her out of random just by looking at everyone. There was one other girl that uh, I love to see. It looks like that she might be a clear-cut winner. I forget her name. She's uh, she's one of the Japanese girls. And if you're listening to this, you probably know who I'm talking about. I was either going for her or Taikara or yeah, Taikara Cody. I think I keep. It. I think I'm saying her name right. I'm probably botching, but whatever. It is what it is. You guys know who I'm talking about. So I'm definitely gonna go for her in the tournament. So we'll see what happens when the the tournament comes uh, 
to the WWE Network in August. Hey, oh, it's so far away. Um, WWE not high on Roman Reigns as the face of the company. So, all right, let's get into the last bit of news. Uh, my Skype still says it's updating. I don't know what's going on, so it doesn't look like I'll be able to get any calls, and I really apologize for that, guys. Probably should have updated it earlier, but it is what it is. So the big news out of all of this, so the huge news I saved for the end is right here, and apparently Darby is not high on Roman Reigns as the face of the company. Darby rumors this week were centered on Roman Reigns due to the highly anticipated match with Samoa Joe at the upcoming Monday Night Raw. However, a new piece of information from the wrestling news world has revealed some shocking information. It appears that WWE officials are having second thoughts with regards to the grand push that Roman Reigns was supposed to get. It was earlier rumored that Brock Lesnar will face several opponents, such as Samoa Joe, Strowman, Finn Balor in 2017, but before losing the title to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 34. Reigns was supposed to get a big push at the grandest event, making him the face of the company. He was being considered us as someone to take John Cena's place in the future. However, the latest WWE rumor suggests that the company might be having second thoughts on these plans. One of the top reasons is Reigns dipping merchandise sales and being booed by the audience, as reported by Sports Kita. Fans usually boo Roman Reigns, but now that, that the trend has been seen at live events too, uh, I guess it's been being seen at live events too now because I guess Roman Reigns used to get a good reaction at live events before, and now he's just getting booed everywhere he goes. Uh, several WWE fans have even unsubscribed from the network, citing that the reason was for Roman Reigns. So they unsubscribe. When you unsubscribe, they ask you the reason why. A lot of people apparently have been putting because of Roman Reigns. <laughs> That is fucking hilarious. People are unsubscribing just because of Roman Reigns. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'd second guess Roman Reigns is the top guy after that too. I mean, I don't blame him. Um, the rest of the article goes, WWE Universe is aware that Vince McMahon wants the big dog to be the face of WWE once John Cena retires. Even if he does not retire, his appearances are decreasing due to his movie career. So WWE officials have been trying to in vain to push Roman Reigns as the face of the WWE. Yeah, they're trying to shove him down our throats, and they're doing it the wrong way. Hopefully now they're realizing it. Ever since the Shield broke up, it appears that officials may finally be giving into the demands of the WWE Universe. Hey, about fucking time. <laughs> oh my god. It is evident that the company sticks to its motto, which, uh, which is to do what is good for business. Merchandise sales, live event fans, and network subscribers are the prime source of income for WWE. If for any reason that there is a hampered in this situation, WWE rumors indicate that the officials are bound to take some solid action. Roman Reigns failing out of favor was evident on Dirty Monday Night Raw in the segment that involved Lesnar and Smojo and Roman Reigns. Um, he was in a situation where the focus was not on him and he was overshadowed by other superstars. It appears that he was the only person who was out of sync, perhaps due to his mic skills. Hey, they're noticing that his mic skills are completely crap and that he sounds like a scripted robot. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. I can't believe you're all noticing this shit now. Uh, WWE rumors indicate that as far as the upcoming match between Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe is concerned, there are there are high chances of Ladder coming out, out victorious, as reported by the Bleacher Report. The big dog's attack on Braun Strowman after their match indicates that the rivalry is not over yet. I'm not finished with you. So considering that their rivalry continues, expect Samoa Joe to win the match and face Lesnar one more time at SummerSlam 2017. So now officials are considering to making it one-on-one. -on -one. Interesting. Could you imagine that? That they just say, fuck you, Roman Reigns. You're going to face Braun Strowman again at SummerSlam one-on-one -on -one in some sort of stupid stipulation match again. And then they just go with, with Samoa Joe and Lesnar again. I mean, I don't really see that happening. I see more of the Fatal 4-Way. But I just crazy out of this entire article now that they're saying that Roman Reigns is not the top guy. On freaking believe They're now noticing all this crap now. When it's been shown, and we've been saying it for the past, what, two years? Unbelievable, man. Oh, that's crazy, man. Darby's having second thoughts on Roman Reigns. Um, I don't know. If I could think of another guy... 
that could replace Roman Reigns as the top guy. Uh, it's tough to say. I have to look at the roster in a whole and, and kind of and pick a few. But a guy like Kenny Omega, if they ever sign him, would definitely be a big fit. I think a guy like Kenny Omega has the charisma factor behind him. He's got the internet popularity. And then when he comes there, I think he can win over a lot of the uh, basic wrestling fans over if they bring him as a baby face right away. So... I don't know. If not, there's a lot of other people on the roster that could definitely be shaped into the number one guy, but it looks like they're having second guess on Roman. Finally, they're listening to us. We, You shoved them down our throats so much that you're probably like, oh man, maybe we shouldn't be shoving them down our throat, or down their throats. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Unbelievable. Um, yeah, Greg in the chat may not be Roman's yard much longer. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll have to see you, Greg. But, uh, man, huge news. That's crazy. Uh, what do we have? 54 minutes, man. That's a big episode today. Huge episode today. So, guys, uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. I don't have any more news. Um, I don't believe I'm going to check uh, the website yet. No, I'm not going to check. That's it. It's been a long episode for you guys. So, that is going to wrap it up for the Sunday Night Heat, guys. The Dirty News and Rumors Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NGVWP or available on the Spreaker app and available for all Android and Apple devices. When this episode is done, it will be posted on Spreaker in full on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram by searching them to host bar WP. Be sure to head over to YouTube and Spreaker and give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'll see you guys next time.